Hi everybody, it's Martin at Flickin' Fellas again today and I'm tying another Flats Fly for you. This is uh, Bosky's Bristle Worm. Originally designed a bonefish fly but it'll work for trevallies or other species that you could be targeting on flats around the world. Tie them in different weights. These are the beach and ivy version I'm tying today but you can tie them with lead eyes and stuff for, for uh, different scenarios, deeper water, things like that. As always, there will be a materials list uh, in the description below, along with a link to some social media and a Patreon page for anybody who would like to support the channel or um, in future be entered into giveaways that we have. So you can see the fly and it's like the orientation of fish, quite buggy, quite nice. So, I'm going to start my hook, put my hook in the vise. This is a Gamakatsu SL 113H I'm tying this on, but use whatever hook, whatever standard shank saltwater hook you like. I'm going to start some Davos flat wax nylon. Just run a base in the shank. Come back to the tie in point for the eyes. These are medium bean chain, so these are this is for really skinny water. I wouldn't go any lighter than this. Just get the invigorator on. Nice and tight. Over and under. And around. <clears throat> just, just make sure they are solid. I mean, I can hardly move them. They, they, they won't twist as they are, but for a wee bit of extra security, just soak that with super glue. Take another couple of lock and wraps, and they will, those eyes will now outlast the rest of the fly, probably. So, take my thread and just about in line with the barb. Get ready to tie in my tail, which you just craft for, tan craft for. You know, quite a, quite a generous bunch for this fly. Um, it's quite a big fly, you know, it's about three inches overall. Uh, so you don't want to make it too skinny or the proportions look a bit off. Take away the under fur, I always save that for dubbing. And then I'll just take away any of the really long fibres and I'll just come in and realign them. That's quite nice. And don't be too fussy. I mean, I let, you want it to be a wee bit sort of raggy and tapered. It should it should be the ends should be separate so that it can open up and breathe when you strip the fly. Tail length, basically two shank lengths. And just three wraps is enough to hold it. I'll trim the butt ends the length of the body. Now just tidy up. Just wind forward and touch and turns. Collect all that butt ends. Gives you a nice tie end point for the next stage. It's just a couple of strands of crystal flash. Do, I'll offer it on my side first and I'll just make them just about the length of the craft for tail. Just pinch them against the shank, two or three wraps, fold it over to the other side, then just get them all, pull them in there. And 
trim away the excess. Quite bar the tail, just got to use a brown marker. This colour's walnut if you're using the Copic pens, but I don't think it's really that crucial. Any sort of brown, you could use black, some people like to use black. Just a four or five bars up the tail. And I just roll it kind of quickly. And that drives the, the ink in and it takes any wet stuff so that if you stroke the tail you're not going to accidentally um, smear it into the rest of the craft fur, which is a real pain if it happens. So I've got to tie in the body hackle now, and I'm just, just a standard strung saddle hackle. Something quite long in the fibre, softish. You don't want like a high quality hackle here, you want something soft, head and webby. But tie it in by the tip. Wind my thread forward. Cover everything up again. Now, for a bit of durability, I'm going to use head cement here and just soak these thread wraps. Um, they'll still be. This will still be damp when I wind the dubbing. So it'll sort of grip it a wee bit and protect the body. The dubbing I'm using here is a mix of under fur from a coyote tail and uh, craft fur. But you can use anything, any sort of dense dubbing. Uh, I believe the original was muskrat, but whatever you like really. EP dubbing works. Rabbit, even. Right, so when you go up here, leave a decent space. I've got, I don't know, two or three mil there. The width of the, the dumbbell eye, uh, but the width of the bead chain eyes clear behind the eye. I'm just going to take this hackle, palm it, open turns. It's not going to be too fussy about folding it or anything. And when I get to the front, I'm going to take two or three full wraps, cross my thread, then anything that's going forward, I'm just going to sweep it back, tie over it, keeping my thread tight will snap away the hackle stem, and that's that locked in. Now, <clears throat> what I sometimes like to do here is I'll just wind the open turns and tie off this body hackle and then I'll add another hackle for a flash of colour. You can see here those extra turns at the front I did with fluorescent pink just to add a little highlight wee hot spot but that's up to you. You could also use if you want to add a bit of colour you could mix some fluorescence into your dubbing. Um, if you watch my coyote shrimp video you'll see uh, I mix egg yarn into the dubbing with that and that sort of lifts the, the body colour a wee bit as well but entirely up to you, it's your fly so to finish it off I'm going to just come in with a bit of more of the same dubbing probably need about the same amount for the head as you did for the body because we're figuring it and building it up a wee bit so we're going to come through the eyes in a figure eight fashion Keep, keep tightening your dubbing as you go. Make sure, make sure, try not to catch any of your hackle. We're going to need a bit more dubbing. You want to build this up quite a bit so that it can be brushed. It looks like it's, you might think it looks like there's too much, but it's, when you brush it, it comes together quite nicely.
just take your time, get it how you like it. Keep it nice and tight. That's fine. Let's fight my wee bit here, but there we go. Then we'll just whip finish. Always two. Sure, though it's nicely tightened, and then I'll come in. I'll just trim away the hackle fibres that are on the underside of the fly, so the top of the, the top of the shank, and then I'll take my velcro. Rub this encouraging fibres into the the hook gap side, which will be the top of the fly when it's fishing. There you have it. That's uh, the bristle worm. Sort of generic shrimpy crustaceany imitation. As I say, originally a bonefish fly, but it works for other species, I'm sure it would work on redfish or uh, definitely works on trevally species, I know that for sure. I mean, anything that eats a shrimp is going to eat this. So, well that was useful, hope you enjoyed it. If it was, please remember to subscribe to the channel and give me a thumbs up below. Till then guys, bye.